It will ask me how I did this script import in MA2. And although I find it quite basic, I think there are some nice principles involved. So I wanted to share them with you because I think a lot of people would be able to use them for all sorts of interesting concepts in MA, especially for this custom layout, custom interface sort of design that a lot of people are doing. So in my setup, I had a, my scripts imported here and I've got some macro buttons that just went through pages. So backwards and forwards, and then a go to page. So I could go to page five, go to page 60, just really jump between the script here and I can move this page up and down and zoom in and out if I needed to. And so this is using a couple of core concepts. So macros, layout views, and image pools. Um, is how I pulled all this together. And I'll go through that step by step. Um, and I think you'll be able to create something even more amazing with it once you know the concepts. So I'll start with a blank show. So new show, clear everything out. Don't save. So looking at my second screen, I'll start, uh, I'm gonna use an, a layout pool, a layout view, sorry, is what is gonna have that page visible. Um, I need a little bit and I'll bring up my layout pool as well. And some macros. I actually need three buttons. I only need one that image so they can all go next to each other. And then I'll bring up my image pool here just so we can see everything at once. This obviously won't be the final interface, but I'll use this to build it. I'll save that so I don't lose it. I'll just call that a script. All right, uh, and so I want to create a new layout. So I'll store a layout. Uh, one thing to note is layouts, if I don't have any fixtures in here, I actually can't edit my layout yet. Everyone actually says no layout. Uh, so layout views actually won't work unless you have fixtures in the console. So let's just patch in some quick uh, dimmers. Put 12 in not necessarily for anything else, just to actually make that layout view work. So now if I look at my layout view, I can see uh, back on the encoder wheels, it now is working. Even though there's no fixtures in here, it just wanted fixtures in the console, and you can see that this grid has now shown up. Uh, so if you're working with a blank show file, that will trip you up. All right, now we can start building stuff. Uh, a label, this is script also. All right, and now uh, activate setup. All right, so the way this works is we want the images to show up in the layout view. So in my image pool, I'm gonna start, I started at 1000 just to keep things well away from anything else I was doing. Um, I can't get there yet. So I'll just store image 1000 in the command line. And now I should be able to scroll all the way down to 1000 in this view. All right, and there it is. So I'll save that view again to make sure I don't have to do all that scrolling all over again. And the reason I start at 1000 is it means I can also start with whole numbers from zero. So zero, 1000 or 000, zero, zero is gonna be my, is my actual placeholder page. And then 1001 will be the first page of the script. But I don't wanna put that in yet. Um, and you'll see why in a second. But if I go to edit the image, import from my USB, which is called Batman, and that's the first page of the script. So I'll put that in 1000 for now, so page one. As you can see, I've to do this, I've exported all of the pages of the script from the PDF into a PNG, and I scaled them as much as possible down, because you do have a 100 megabyte limit on images in your MA show file. Uh, so what I did, is I made sure I exported it in monochrome, so it's not doing a grayscale, but a monochrome and I reduced the DPI down as much as possible in Adobe. Uh, so it was still readable, but as small as possible. So I got down to under 100 kilobytes. So between 20 to 100 kilobytes per page means the whole thing is still quite small. Uh, so I just want to import page one at the moment. There it is there, you can see it's quite a large image. And back here, there is Page one is now at 1000. So now I want to put this into the layout view. So in my layout view, enter setup mode, and I'm going to choose the rectangle option to draw. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm just going to draw that straight in the layout, roughly the same dimensions or aspect as a A4 piece of paper. And straight away, I can choose an image right here. So these are the default images. I'm going to choose from the image pool. And there's my image here. Uh, and so the reason I've only imported one is so I can tell that's exactly where I want. 
because this is referencing that pool slot, so 1000. Uh, so if I had imported the whole script, I would see all the pages and it'd be difficult to make sure I've got the right one. I want to make sure I'm referencing exactly that pool slot and not necessarily that particular image. Uh, so I can choose that now, please. And there it is in there. All right, and so now I can import my entire script. So I know that 1000 is what is showing up here. So enter edit mode for that one. Import image, I can select everything and it's going to import from 1001 all the way up to 1101. So I can open all of those now. And there they all are, all my images for all the pages. So page one is 1001 and so on. All right, and so the way this swaps is using the command line to copy and paste images between the two. Uh, so if I go, say I want to copy page 20, so I'll copy image 1020 at 1000 and overwrite it and you can see that page is swapped over straight away. Uh, I'll bring it back to what it was, so 1001 is the first page at 1000 is the slot I wanted in and this command slash O means override. So rather than that dialog popping up, it will now do it automatically and will overwrite instantly. So very simple. So that's the, uh, the core concept for switching over images in your layout view. And this has been used for all sorts of things. I've seen um, people have color pickers and stuff or command interfaces for turning things on and off, macros on and off. It's very powerful. And this is the basics behind it is swapping over those images with macros. Uh, so I've just used command line at the moment. So I want to have three macros here. Uh, so I'll store those in now quickly. And this will be page down. Um, this one will be page up. And my middle one will be go to page. I need to edit these macros. So first of all, I'll start with the uh, next page. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the next page. Uh, so I'm going to edit this macro first. So switch over to edit view. And what I want to do is I want to tell it to go to that, uh, to go to the next page. So I'm going to copy the image again, same as before, but this time I'm going to use a variable. So copy image variable page. So uh, variables are very powerful. And you can use them to save store values across and use them between macros, between all sorts of things in the command line. Um, and I need it to know what page it's on at all the time. So I'm just adding one every time. Otherwise I'd have to have lots of macros to figure out where we're at. Uh, so I need a define page. So right now I'm just calling what page it is. And I want to set that at that slot 1000 and override it. So that won't do anything at the moment because first of all, there is no, I haven't defined page yet. And I can define that in the command line. Um, set there for set variable page dollar page is equal to 1001. So now I've defined that variable. You can see it's saved it here. If I have that macro, it's going to save that page. Uh, I can set that variable again to something else to 1050. And now if I call that macro, We'll change that to page slot 50. Uh, but I want to define that macro at 1001 first. Uh, so I'll set the variable uh, page to equal 1001. So that's where we need to start. And now what I want this button to do back in edit mode is I want to add one to that every time I click that button. So I'll add a new line above. I want to add to that variable. So add var is the command to add to a variable. So I want to add to, to page one. So now I'm just adding one to page and then I'm calling that page with that new value at 1000. So right now, so now we're clicking through the pages. If we look at the command line here, we can see it's going up by one every time. Uh, I want to do a similar thing for the page back macro, but I want to remove one. So looking over at its edit functions now, and to move value, we are simply adding a negative value. So add variable page equals minus one. And now same as before, 
copy image variable page at 1000 and override. And that's it. So looking back at our commands here, that macro is now active and you can see we're now going down the pages you can see in the command line here. Until eventually we get back to the very first page. All right, and we will be able to keep going. If there's nothing for it to copy, it won't copy anything. It'll just override nothing. But now I've actually lost my variable position. Uh, I'm going to sit it at 1000 before it starts clicking through. The next thing I wanted to do was actually go to a specific page. So rather than to click through the whole script, just jump to a specific page. Um, and to do that, I've got a new, a couple of other variables I need to add. So I'll edit this one. And first of all, just noting with my script, uh, page one actually starts at 1005 for me, or 1006, because uh, the first few pages just kind of um, preface and stuff. So I started with a different with a different starting point for that. So first of all, we want to ask the user what page they want to go to. So we'll use another variable for that, and we'll actually define it in the script. So set variable. Uh, we'll call this page num. And it will equal, and now we're going to ask the user with a dialog. So anything in brackets is a pop-up dialog, page number, question mark. And it's just going to pop up and ask the user which one they want. And it's going to set that variable based on their input um, to make sure I'm adding. So rather than my page variable being has been increased by up and down, I need to reset that to the very starting point. So I'll add my set var again for page. And because I want zero to be that for that fifth page, I'll call that 1005. Um, that's just based on my script, but that means I'm starting at 1005. And now I wanna add these two together. So I wanna add, say they've chosen page 20, it means I need to go to image pool 1025. So I need to add the 20 from page number to that variable page. And that's a very simple add variable again. So I'm adding to the page variable. And what I'm adding is the page num, which is what we defined in that first step. So now that's setting page to 1025. And then all I need to do is copy that image like before. So copy image variable page at 1000, override. And now I've done all that, um, I'll put a, a small delay in here just to slow things down a second, just in case there is a bit of an overlap. Um, and back in here, so now I can see my go to page is working. If I want to go to page 55, and there we go, we jump to page 55. If I move around here, you can see we're on page 55 in my script. And now I can still use that variable to go forwards and backwards as I did before. Go to page one. Uh, page one of the script, and I can go back to the start from there. I can jump to any page, 65. And so that's all it was, a couple of simple macros and some image swapping. Um, so there's not a lot going on here, but once you understand it, you can do some very powerful things using variables and copy and pasting images. And so this layout view thing, very powerful. A lot of people use this for their color pickers, for showing gobos, showing um, all sorts of custom user interface stuff on your MA show file. And I have no idea who came up with this concept first of copying and swapping images. Whoever did, if anyone knows who did, I know a lot of people are using it, but I'd love to know who the first person was that figured this out because this opened the doors to a lot of custom interface stuff in MA and it's very powerful once you start playing with it. Uh, so hope that helps. Hope you learned something. Have fun. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments.